Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm going to flip my camera here for a second. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go not backwards today, so I'm going to switch this around. See if some of you hop on. Can't quite. My angles. I'm going to do it the regular way. Okay. So you can't see me yet, but I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay, we got somebody on. Everybody hear me okay? Can you guys hear me? Somebody answer. I see we got a couple folks on. I know you can't see me in the screen, but just want to make sure you can hear me. So somebody give me a thumbs up or a heart or a something that you can hear me real quick before we get started. Hi, Kel. Kel, can you tell me if you can hear me? Somebody let me know. Hi, Lindsay. Is the heart mean yes, you can hear me? <laughs> I'm going to assume it does. Somebody tell me if you can hear me. Just type in the comments for me so I know. Yes, okay. Thanks, Missy. You're a good student. <laughs> um, I'm on a minute late because literally at 4 o'clock the doorbell rang, the dog's running around, you know. My husband's like, we got to figure out a different studio space. I'm like, well, it is what it is. So thank you for being on today and um, welcome to this healing practice. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the power of the ripple effect. And we're going to focus on how to work a little with anxiety and stress and kind of replenish the adrenals. That'll, those, that'll be our, you know, asana focus. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about this ripple effect because I feel like we're in this time and I know we're in quarantine and so we don't get out as much. And I think we can feel like little things that we do don't really matter, whether it's hanging out with our family or maybe having a phone conversation or different things like this. And I just want to remind us all that, that they do matter. Um, they matter a lot. And so I was watching yesterday, and if you haven't seen it, I have to tag it below, but there was this story of this Lincoln teacher, um, a librarian, and I got all emotional about it. She's doing all these cool read-alouds, and she got recognized on the Today Show. It was amazing. And she, I don't think she really realized like the profound effect that she was having in what she did or was doing and is doing. And I had received a letter recently um, from, a, from an, an individual that I met at an Arbonne gathering five years ago when I first started my business, I met her at somebody's house that I had just met and never saw her again. And rewind a year ago, she was going to come to my retreat that um, my Be Mind Body Shift retreat that I had last year. And we had to keep postponing it because of the awesome Lincoln weather. And so she wasn't able to come. And the reason she wasn't able to come is she got diagnosed with cancer and she was too sick to come. And so periodically I would check in with this person. Um, her name is Cindy and she said I could use her name and she never answered. <laughs> and so, you know, you think you can create whatever you want in your head, but I, you know, I was just like, well, that's, you know, I didn't really think too much of it. I just was like, I'm going to keep reaching out and checking in and yada, yada. Well, one day I literally randomly a couple weeks ago, get this letter in the mail and she had a pancreatic tumor and, um, after all of her chemo in, in October, they, she had said that the doctor felt he could no longer do any more chemo, that she was just, that's it. Like your, your body can't take it anymore. And so she said she didn't think she'd survive another month. Well, she, her doctor said, focus on quality, not quantity. And so she said, I made a goal that I was going to live till Christmas. And she said, and then I made it to Christmas. And so then I made a goal to make it to March. And guess what? I made it to March. And then I went in and basically the tumors were gone. And like, how does that happen? I mean, it's just like a miracle, right? And so she said, she, the reason she wanted to reach out to me what, and write this letter, this two page letter, um, I wanted to reach out to you to tell you how much you motivate and inspire me. I've always wanted to do yoga and signed up for your retreat last year but had to cancel because I was too sick. I bought my yoga mat and was so excited to go. 
Didn't get the mat out until I started feeling better in January. I got a, a book at the Barnes and Noble and tried a few poses that I thought I could do. And I said to myself, if Alicia could see me, she would keep telling me to try and this is so good for you. <laughs> well, here I am today, still doing it almost every morning. I can't do anything too exotic, but I like to stretch and refresh my mind to start another day. I enjoy your Friday sessions on Facebook where the chair yoga is easier. You guys, this story is like a perfect example of the ripple effect that we have in our lives and we don't even know the impact that we are making. And this is a person I met one time that I never would have thought anything that I would have had any kind of impact on her in any way. And so I just, I just am saying this to you because we never, we never know. And Mother Teresa said um, something along the line. She said, as one person, I can't change the world, but I can throw a stone across the water and, and create a ripple effect, basically, is what she said. And that's what we're doing every single day. That's what this practice does. It's like you don't even know the things that come to you because of your time on this mat. And so we're going to work on the adrenals reducing stress, anxiety, because we are in so much uncertainty that our body, it's easily starting to get super fatigued right now. And understanding the ripple effect, even in our own body, the way one system relies on the other system to keep us charged every single day. So I hope this um, brings light. This is a story, but there are stories that you don't even know. There are people, people that every single one of you are touching and they just may not be reaching out to, to tell you about it. So just know that the choices you make every day, they do have an impact. And so often we can't even see it. That one took years, right? Like literally a long time. So, and would it, would I still keep doing what I'm doing right now if I wouldn't have got the letter? Absolutely. So are you ready? I hope so. Block, blanket. Um, we're gonna start seated, but we're gonna be coming onto our back shortly. <clears throat> Sorry, that was a little bit of a long intro, but I feel like I always say to people, you're probably not going to remember the warrior two that I tell you in yoga, but hopefully, hopefully something um, pops out of my mouth at some point that resonates and sticks with you a little longer than your time on your mat. So sit up nice and tall, close your eyes. I want you to drop into your breath. Start to slow everything down. going to do several different things today, <clears throat> things that feel familiar, but also things that might feel a little bit unfamiliar. We're going to work a little bit with some asymmetrical things, which are really good um, to help anything asymmetrical just kind of re helps to um, rebalance the nervous system because it requires a great amount of focus and, and attention. So as you slow your breathing down, I want you to notice and see if, in fact, you might even take your hands to your abdomen and see if we can get into some abdominal breathing. And as you breathe in, feel your belly expand out. And as you exhale, feel your belly draw inward. So notice if it's hard to get it down in the belly. It's much easier to get it up in the chest. Inhale. Exhale. Go at your own pace. Breathing in. Breathing out. Good. And now that you've had that established, let your hands come down in your legs. And before we set an intention, I'm going to give you a chance to do uh, what's called the bee's breath, which is a really great breath that you can do any time, but it's so good for anxiety, okay? Now, harder to do when you're out in public, but really good to do when you're home. And all it is is it's making a buzzing sound. So it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
go at any pitch. You can go high, you can go low, anything. Okay, so we're gonna do it four times. So four B's breath. So you're gonna breathe in through your nose. And as you breathe out, you're gonna make the, the sound. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Two more. Inhale. If you can't do this breath, just do Ujjayi breath with where you are in your house. One more time. Your whole head, whole body vibrate last time. together in front of your heart. You probably noticed in my breath it, it'll pulse a little bit. You can feel it kind of goes in and out, all that totally normal. Take a moment and set an intention. And the ripple and the impression I want to cast upon our practice today is the word blessings and noticing the blessings in our life the littlest of blessings, this yoga mat that you're able to roll out, this time that you have to be on your mat, this heart that is open enough to just step into this practice. And then release your chin down towards your chest. Let your hands come down to your legs and inhale, lift your chin, open your eyes. Good, let's come on to the back. Okay, so some days I do like to have a blanket under my mat, especially if it's cold. So you're gonna start with your feet flat on the floor. Eyes can be opened or closed. So we're gonna start right off the bat with a little asymmetrical movement. And this again, so helpful for concentration, which will help reduce anxiety because you have to focus your awareness so acutely, okay? So you're gonna take your arms by your sides you're gonna inhale both arms up to the sky. And then right when you get to the top, keep the left arm at the sky, but keep reaching the right arm overhead. And then as you exhale, bring the right arm back. And when they're together, exhale both of them back down next to your hips. Okay, here we go. Now you're gonna switch. So inhale both arms up. Keep the left arm going. Keep inhaling. So you have to find your way with that breath. Exhale. Both arms start to come down. So the, the great challenge is the timing, right? Inhale, both arms up, right arm keeps going. Exhale begins. Inhale. Exhale. Keep going, inhale. And it may happen that your mind forgets, like did I just do the right or did I just do the left? Don't worry, just keep going. Last time, left side. Exhale. Good, similar, slightly different. Reach your arms overhead. This time you're gonna go up into a bridge pose. So you may wanna watch first so you're not cranking your neck as you go into bridge. You, it's really helpful to not move your head side to side here. So your hips are gonna come up as they do. Your arms are gonna come up. One arm will stop at the top point. So right arm is gonna keep going for me. Left arm is gonna stay. And then exhale, the arm will come back. The hips will go down and both arms will go overhead, okay? So know that it's going to take a couple times. Here we go. Inhale. 
Now my left arm is going by my side, my right arm staying to the sky, exhale. Don't worry too much about how high the hips go. So trying to time the arms landing overhead as the sacrum comes down. It's quite challenging, inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Last time on the left. Inhale. Exhale. Very good. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Alrighty, that feels so good. Just kind of bringing the breath and in sync a little bit more with the body. Cactus your arms, bring your knees so they're right above your hips. Open your chest, take an inhale. Exhale, take your knees over to the right. Now you can keep your gaze to the sky. You can turn your gaze to the left if that feels better. Imagine that your outer left hip is moving away from your left shoulder. That the contents of the inner body is moving to the left. So even though your legs are to the right, there's an energy sense internally of things moving left. That's what makes twist so powerful, is that spiraling action. Good, bring it back up, inhale. Exhale over to the left. Gazing to the right. Feeling the belly move towards the right side. That right shoulder, it may not come all the way down today. If you had a blanket, you could put it underneath there if it feels like it's just hanging out in space. But we started with abdominal breathing and I want you to really notice the breath. Notice the abdomen, not just the chest, the abdomen. Take the breath in, you feel it into the low belly. As you exhale and you contract, the breath empties. You can actually twist a little deeper, getting more of the shoulder blade maybe down. And we start to see the ripple effect, right? The ripple effect of how we don't always have to force our way. In fact, we never have to force our way into a pose. The breath just, it carries you there. Good, inhale, bring it back up. Exhale, set the feet down. Take the feet wide, knees knock in. You're gonna inhale, take the knees to the right as you do stretch your left arm towards the back left corner of your mat like somebody's kind of tugging on your wrist on the diagonal. And then exhale, bring it back to center, tap your inner knees, feet stay wide. Good, now switch, knees to the left. Straighten your right arm out like a starfish. Reach, reach, reach. And back to center. You're just going to go side to side at your breath. And maybe at the top of the breath, just pause for a second. And then exhale, bring it back to center. It doesn't have to be a long retention, just slight inhale, reach. Exhale, center. Inhale. Exhale. When you kind of linger at the top of that inhale, you can almost feel just the juiciness. Like, uh, like when your mom scratched your back as a kid and you didn't want it to stop, exhale, or somebody, or rubbed your head, I don't know, something that just felt really good that you didn't want to end. That's how I think of it. Inhale. 
a blessing, right? Exhale. Can we train our mind to begin to watch for blessings? They don't have to be these big, miraculous things. In fact, I feel like we miss so many because we're looking for things that will really inhale, grab our attention. And so we miss all these small moments of magnificence. Back to center last time, going to the left, reach the right arm, hold at the top, exhale. Good, hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. And you can either rock up or roll to your right side, whichever feels better for you. You're going to come around to all fours. All right, tabletop position. Spread the fingers. And we're just going to do some lateral movements here. So knees are under the hips, and you can have them, I have mine just slightly back. The reason for that is so that the side body can be just a little bit longer. Sometimes people bring the knees in just a little too much. It actually contracts the respiratory and the side body. So better to have them back just a hair and it wakes up the core just a little. So inhale, neutral, neutral head, neutral spine. And then you're gonna exhale, bend to the right so your left side expands. Inhale and then exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, so easy in our day. Exhale to kind of be rounded, and so we scrunch the side waist, rounding forward. And so this is really good movement to bring us back to creating more expansion. Inhale, right, one more time. Center. Inhale, left. Exhale, center. Inhale, drop the belly. Now traditional cow. Good. Now I want you to tuck your toes. Exhale. Down dog. You can keep your knees bent, okay? N not necessary to keep them straight. Inhale, cow. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, cow. Shoulders out of the ears. Exhale, down dog. Couple more. Now you can go any pace here. If you want to go a little faster, you're more than welcome to, or slower, of course. Inhale. Exhale. Last time, yogis. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, all fours. Exhale, come up. Sit on your shins. Okay. So I want you to take your right hand behind your head, okay? Left hand's going to go to your low back, palm's going to face out, okay? So you're going to slowly on the inhale, reach left arm down, right arm up to the sky, inhale. And then you're going to sit to child's pose, and as you do, you're going to switch your arm. So your right arm is going to come to your low back, and your left hand is going to come to the back of your head, forehead to the floor, buttocks to heels. So inhale, rise up, reach the arm up, other arm down, my right arm's by my hip, and then exhale. Good, several of these. Inhale up. So we're practicing movement internally and externally, rotating the shoulder. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Now this time as you go, I want you to hover your hands. Hover your hand behind your head. Hover your hand above your low back. Forehead still gets to tap the ground. Woo, that makes you work a little harder. Inhale, come up. Exhale. Hover, hover, hover. Keep lifting the elbows up. Inhale. Now if this is too much on the back, Exhale. Then I want you to just keep both hands on the sacrum and just keep them there the whole time. Okay? Inhale up. Exhale. 
One more, each side. Exhale. Last one, breathe in. My shoulders are already feeling a bit warm. Exhale. Good. Reach both arms out in front of you. Inhale. Puppy pose. So something symmetrical here now. Exhale. So hips are over heels. Sorry, hips are over knees. Forehead starts on the ground. If you're more open here, chin can start to come to the floor. Keep your ujjayi breath going. If you get any pain in your neck, please just let your forehead shift to the mat instead of the chin. Hug your hands in. Wrap your outer triceps in. Take another two breaths. Breathe in. Push into your palms. Lift your armpits. As you exhale, melt the base of the bottom tips of the shoulder blades towards the floor. Good. Walk the hands, the head up, the hands in. Inhale. Right foot forward in between the hands. Exhale. Coming into a lunge. Inhale. Lift the chest. So we can get a lot of tightness here in the groins. So just starting to open up those hips a little bit. This won't be a super long hold, but we'll come back to it. The ripple effect of opening up the body and practicing not trying to force it. And the nice thing about a home practice is there's no one that you're needing to feel like you're doing it better or you're not as good at, right? So you get to find that space, right foot back, left foot forward, where you get comfortable just with you, right? Being comfortable in your own skin. Now my front ankle is right under the knee. So if you need to, you may have to scooch it a little more forward. You have a blanket perhaps, and any blanket will do. You don't have to have a yoga blanket. So if this hurts your back knee, whoop, just put that blanket under there for some padding. And I want you to practice not moving, which I think is <laughs> the hardest thing to do. It's like I want to fidget and move and find just the right spot. See if you can just be. Actually kind of sit your awareness in the sensation. So mine, I feel it in my hip, on the front. So putting my awareness, my attention on that hip. Very good. Bring the hands down. Now, if you need to scooch that front foot back a little bit, it'll make it easier to transition. You're gonna step forward. So lift the back knee up, push off that back foot. Uttanasana, forward bend. Bend in the knees, feet are about hip distance apart. And I want you to just sort of, you can ragdoll if you like ragdoll. Some days I like my hands on the ground, but I still like the swaying motion. The blessings of the earth, right? Even just this feeling of feeling the mat and the texture. Waking up the side body. One more breath. Good. And then put a little bend in your knees. Let's roll it up vertebrae by vertebrae. Ah, shoulders relax down the back. Very good. Okay, feet are going to stay hip distance. We're going to work a little bit with balance here, going back into some of those asymmetrical poses, really helping with anxiety here. So. We'll start with just the arms. So the arms, you're gonna turn the palms up. We're gonna inhale the arms till they get to shoulder height. And then one arm's gonna keep going to the top. You're gonna to pause, hold the breath just a little at the top. And then exhale, bring the arm back down. And when the arms are both in line with each other, they come down together, just like you did when we were reclined. Okay, and then you'll switch. The other arm will stay, opposite arm will go up. Okay, to make it extra fun, and this is to have fun, but it also has purpose because when we have to balance 
it causes you to, to bring your focus into center. You're gonna see if you can lift up on the heels as you go, okay? So when the arms go up, the heels go up. When the arms come down, the heels come down. Right on, here we go. Inhale, lift the heels, lift the arms. Keep reaching right arm up. Don't worry about how high the heels lift today. Exhale, bring the hand back down. Both arms, when they feel together, release simultaneously. Okay, inhale. Now left arm goes up. Exhale, lower it down. It is 100% okay to wobble. I hope you're not perfect. Inhale, reach up. Remember what Tony Robbins said, lowest standard, because it's absolutely unattainable. No one can achieve perfection. Inhale, reach up. Now what helps here is the breath, of course, but also your drishti. And I, can, I just like be fascinated with the way, like my weight tends to go to the outer edges of my feet when I'm trying to find my balance. So just notice for you what happens. So I'm gonna squeeze a little more to the midline. Inhale. And if someone comes in the room, you just be like, <laughs> just give them a good old wave. It's hard to focus. Second thing that really helps is your drishti. One more time each side, which is your gaze. So find a spot to focus on. I'm dancing all over the place today. Exhale. But we don't have to get frustrated with ourselves, right? Just let it be. You will not always feel balanced. Balance doesn't mean steady. Very good. All right. Take your feet a little wider. We're going to take some of the tension out of that shoulders. I can kind of come there. All right. So this is called spinal cord kind of opening here. All right. So you're going to inhale, kind of making a fist. Your legs are going to be a little bit bent. So you're going to inhale, open, and then exhale, bend down, tuck your tail, and round in. Inhale. So flexion and extension. So even here, my knees are bent. Exhale. Three more. Exhale. Inhale. Maybe hold a little at the top. Exhale. One more. Exhale. Good, inhale up. Now we're gonna do what's called knocking on the door of life, okay? So this helps stimulate the kidneys, the adrenals, so when we start to get fatigued and chronic stress, and even in this state, we're home, the adrenals just, it's a slow, a slow amount of stress, but it's constant, it doesn't end, so we wanna just sort of wake up the torso. So you're gonna come around, and I got my mic here, but I think it'll be okay. So your arms are going to be kind of loose and you're going to knock your back hand just against the low back right where the kidney is. Kidneys sit right there. Yeah, okay. Right up below the rib cage. And you're easy on the front. Just a little twist, slight little bend in the knees. Yep. And it kind of feels good. When you get over, like what if somebody walks in again? You just get over that feels good. Okay, you're going to bring it up. The back hand's going to stay knocking on the back, but the front hand is going to come up and start knocking on the chest. So starting to stimulate the respiratory system and the lung. Z. <laughs> okay, back hand is still on your kidneys. Okay, it's going around the low back. And this time you're going to bring it up a little further. You're going to keep the back hand on the kidneys, but you're going to wrap the top hand. I'm going to kind of cup it and it's going to go over the shoulder. Yep. So lateral rotation, we're working on with the spine as well. Bring it back to the chest. Get your inner Tarzan or Jane. Okay, bring it back to low back, just low back. Very good. And then slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Good, so we just worked this lateral rotation. We're gonna add on the movement we did earlier. You're gonna twist to the right, 
Little bend in the knees, open the chest. Exhale, round. Forearms together, bend the knees. Now go left. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So we're doing these movements, a lot of these last few movements. Inhale. A little bit of Tai Chi kind of movements to get the Chi, the energy moving in the body. Exhale. Inhale. One more each side. Exhale. Last time left. Exhale. Inhale. Open. Exhale. Release. Arms by your sides. Good. All right. Here we go. I'm going to step to the top of the mat. Inhale. Both arms up. Reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Now, in your forward fold, just notice for a moment kind of the kidney area. In fact, if you want to reach up and just do a little self-massage here for a moment, noticing the back. Hands release back to the ground. Inhale, lengthen your spine. I have a little bend in my knees. Totally okay. Exhale, right leg steps back. Back knee goes down to the ground. Good. Arms reach up. Inhale. Good, exhale, back off a little bit, inhale, exhale, one more time, inhale, exhale, hands to the ground, inhale, back knee lifts, step forward, exhale, part way up, inhale, half high, exhale, left foot steps back, back knee drops down, arms reach up, breathe in, back off a little, Bending in, backing off, find your breath. So inhale, exhale, less important just that you're breathing in and out with the movement. One more time, breathing in, exhale, breathe out. Good, inhale, hands to the ground, lift the back toes, exhale, step forward. Lift up part way, breathe in, exhale, refold and bow. Reverse your swan dive. Inhale up. You're going to point your index fingers, cross your thumbs, and take your fingers, index fingers, so they point up. And then inhale. This is not a big back bend. Just inhale. Lift up a little. And then exhale. Bend like you're sitting into chair pose. The heels of your hands, it's kind of like you're a unicorn, are going to come to the back of the head, and you're going to round in. So inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Pulse in. Two more. Reach, exhale. One more, inhale. Exhale. Bring your hands behind you, interlace your hands. Now if you're feeling unsteady, just separate your feet. Reach your arms, your knuckles up and over. If you can't quite get your hands to clasp, just reach if you have a strap or a tie, something to hold on to. You can take hold of that. Take another breath, breathe in. Exhale, release your hands to the earth. Inhale, lift up part way. Exhale, left foot steps back. We're gonna come to a warrior one. Spin your back heel down. Arms reach up towards the sky. Sink a little deeper now in the front legs. So we've got knee over ankle. And now you're gonna take both hands out in front of you, palms together. So the back leg, we're gonna do a little movement here. The back leg, that arm's going to go up. The other arm is going to go out to the side, 90 degrees, okay? So you're going to inhale, open the arm, left arm up, right arm out, and then straighten the front leg, bring your palms together, straight out in front of you. Yep, inhale, exhale. Back to those asymmetrical movements, inhale, exhale. It's a totally different kind of practice. Inhale, different level of concentration. Exhale, creating a deeper sense of awareness. Inhale, so hopefully we can notice those blessings later. Exhale, one more time, yogis. Inhale, exhale. Now go back into the lunge with the arm up. Here we go, inhale. Now bend this back, this top arm, your left arm, you're gonna rest it. Remember how we actually put it on the head to start. And then I'm gonna turn around so you can see her for a sec. Other hand's gonna go to your low back, palm facing out, okay? 
Now see if you can hover the hands. Inhale, hover, hover both hands off, the sacrum and the head. Now exhale, straighten the arms. Inhale, circle the arms. So now right arms up, left arm, and then bend the elbows, rest the hand on the low back and let it actually rest on the head. So now we're gonna do it again. Inhale, hover. Exhale, reach. Inhale, spiral. Exhale, bend, hover for a second, rest it down. Inhale, hover. Exhale, reach. Inhale, switch. Exhale, bend, hover for a millisecond, set it down. Last time, inhale, hover. Exhale, reach. Inhale, switch. Exhale, bend. Woo, straighten that front leg. Bump your back foot up. Rest your right hand just like you did on your sacrum. Inhale. And now reach forward, pyramid pose with that left hand. Right hand for a moment, just keep it on the sacrum, or if you want to, bring your right thumb into that right hip crease and use your four fingers on the outer hip to wrap it back. Good, let that hand come down to the ground, take an inhale. Exhale. Two more breaths, breathe in. Breathe out. One more, inhale, exhale. Bend that front knee, inhale, step it forward, Uttanasana. Lift up part way, breathe in. Exhale, right foot steps back, warrior one. Arms reach up, breathe in. Exhale, straighten that front leg, arms straight out in front of you. Okay, so now it's your right arm that's going up, that's your back leg. Left arm's gonna go out to the side. Here we go. Inhale. Pause at the top. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. You can kind of feel there's a moment maybe. Inhale. Like which arm is doing what? Exhale. It's okay. Last time. Inhale. Exhale. Now this time you're gonna leave the arms. Inhale, exhale, bend, rest your right hand on the back of your head, left hand on your low back, palm facing out, okay? So you're gonna hover the hands, inhale, exhale, straighten the arms, inhale, cartwheel the arms and switch, exhale, bend and hover for a millisecond before you set them down, okay? Inhale, hover, exhale, reach, Inhale, switch, exhale, hover, pause and set it down. Inhale, lift, exhale, reach, inhale, switch, exhale, hover. Last time, inhale, switch around, hover and set it down. Very good. Inhale, reach the arm up. Straighten that front leg, bump your back foot up. Keep the left hand on the low back. Inhale here and exhale, hinge forward. Pyramid pose. I'm gonna sweep this left thumb into the hip crease, wrap the four fingers to the outside and take it back. Keep your big toe mound on this front foot, pushing down as best you can. Back toes angled forward, almost like you're walking. And then if you like, let that hand rest down on the floor. Take another breath. One more breathing in, breathing out. Now you're gonna walk to the right into a straddle. I'm gonna turn around so I face you, but you're gonna walk to the right into the straddle. I'm gonna just turn myself so I, facing you, so you don't have to get a booty shot here. Okay, so inhale, hands under shoulders, stretch the heart forward. Exhale, fold. Lift up again, part way, inhale. Walk your hands over towards your right ankle foot. Grab anywhere you can on the outer leg. Now if you like, keep that right leg straight, but bend your left knee. 
You might just notice some, some sensation, some deeper sensation in different places. In my body, it awakens in the hamstring and the groin on my right leg and in my left side waist quite a lot. It might be different in yours. Good. If you've got that leg bent, straighten it. Inhale. Exhale. Walk yourself back to center. Lengthen your spine. Breathe in. Exhale. Walk over towards your left leg. Holding wherever you can grab. Nothing novel about the foot. And if you can't even grab around the outside, just keep your hands in the general vicinity of the left side of your leg. Towards your left leg. And then if you like keeping that left leg straight, now bend your right knee. Take another breath, breathe in. Let the breath fully empty. Straighten both your legs. Walk your hands back to center. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, forward fold. Now if you had a block, you are more than welcome to use it. You could bring your forearms on that block. You could place the top of your head on the block. For a lot of us, the weight will shift back into those heels. We want to feel the heels, but we also want to feel the front of the foot as well. So make sure that you maybe lean forward just a little so some weight is going into the balls of the feet. And that the center of your hip is in line with the center of the knee, which is in line with the center of your ankle bone. Relax your head and neck. Relax your jaw. If your hamstrings are just squealing at you, you can put a little bend in the knees. Good, and then hands out in front. Inhale, stretch the heart forward. Exhale, turn the right toes back towards the front of your mat. Plant your hands, step back, plank pose. Lower all the way to your belly. So you can put your knees down if you like, all the way down. Okay, bring a cheek to the mat. So let's start with the right cheek on the mat. Hopefully you can still sort of hear me. All right, right cheek on the mat. And you're gonna inhale, lift your chest up. And as you do, so your right cheek was down, I want you to lift your head and chest and like, you're going to salute. You're going to take your left hand and literally salute. And then exhale, lower that left hand back to the ground and bring your left cheek now to the mat. Look to the right. Now we're looking right. So it's the right arm that's going to come forward for the salute. Inhale, lift. Exhale, right cheek to the mat. Look left. Salute on the left. And you can always do cactus if the salute doesn't work because you're bringing the arm overhead. It's a little more difficult. Exhale, left cheek to the mat. Right arm, inhale. Exhale, right cheek. Now we're going to alternate the opposite leg. We're going to add that piece in. So left arm, inhale, lift right leg. And now lower leg and arm, left cheek to the mat, look right. Lift left leg, inhale, right arm. Exhale, right cheek down, look left. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, left cheek, look right. Left leg, right arm, inhale. Exhale, this is not easy. So bravo, whatever you're able to do today, it's, it's helping, inhale. Even if you feel like you're barely getting off the ground, exhale. We got one more. Even my cheeks, they're feeling rosy here from this. Left leg, right arm. Inhale. And lower. Now this time, just stack your hands. Ooh. Wiggle out those hips. And let's take a thigh stretch. So I'm going to start with my forehead actually on the back of my hands, keeping the left forearm down. Reach back with your right hand. Catch your right ankle or foot. Now, if you want a bigger back bend, you are more than welcome to lift up on that forearm. 
If you want a greater shoulder opener, you can make your hand in the shape of a C with the fingers on the outside, the thumb on the in, or even turning the fingertips in the same direction as the toes. So you just find that space that feels good in your body today. The knee, the right knee tends to splay out to the right. You're gonna to try to keep it right in line with your right hip. Anchor your tailbone down. Keep lifting the pubic bone up and release. Go ahead, second side. Right forearm down, right hand reach, or sorry, left hand reaches back, catches left foot. Remember, you can come up higher. This is feeling delightful here today, just staying low. If you want to come up higher, come up higher. Good, and then let it go. We're going to take seal pose. So your feet are going to go as wide as your mat. Your hands are going to turn out toward the corners of your mat. Lift your belly, low belly, tailbone down, and then you can stay on the forearms. We're just getting a nice compression here in the kidneys, which is so good for those adrenals, or if you want to lift up, you're going to lift up, elbows up. And the further away my hands are, the less intense, the closer in my hands are towards my body, the greater the intensity, so you find that space. But notice if your shoulders are shrugging towards your ears, draw your shoulders out of your ears, take the head of the shoulders, reach them back, and it's as though your shoulder blades are moving your heart between your upper arms. Your gaze is soft. Noticing maybe a blessing out your window. And a moment of maybe some peacefulness. Again, if you get any pain in the back, lots of places you can back off to And then exhale slowly, Ooh, bring it down, stack the other hand on top. I want you now just to breathe into that kidney area right below your rib cage. The adrenals sit on top of that almost triangular shape like a little hat <laughs> right on top of those kidneys. So we're going to massage them out. So we're going to roll on the back. I forgot my clock today, so I have to peek at my kitchen clock. How are we doing? Okay, pretty good. All right, roll over onto your back. Woo! All right, Apanasana. Hold your hands, one on each knee. And my arms to torso, I like to grab actually in the back of the legs. So if you want to grab on the back of the legs, if that's easier for you, you can do that. Inhale, reach the knees away from you. And then exhale, let the knee, thighs come towards the chest. So inhale, this is a really just gentle, gentle massage. Exhale. And we did an asymmetrical back bend to start with that frog, half frog thigh stretch. Then we did seal, that was symmetrical. And now back to a little bit of symmetry here too. Inhale. Exhale. So I want you to try to inhale for six. As you move your thighs away, hold for three, and then try to exhale in for nine, okay? So you're gonna inhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, two, one, and now exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, again, inhale, five, four, three, two, one, hold, two, one, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, again, so you're inhaling six, you're holding for three at the top, and you're exhaling for nine. So starting to activate 
the parasympathetic, even more nervous system with these longer exhales. Inhale. Last time, inhaling six, hold three, exhaling nine. Good. Keep the right leg in, extend your left leg out. Wind relieving pose. Maybe right hand on right leg, left hand on left thigh and just make some circles if that feels good. Go the other way. And then take the leg up towards the sky, grab around the back of your hamstring. And starting to move some of the energy from the legs upward a little bit. Wrapping your outer right hip away from your right shoulder. Feeling your quad muscles on the front side of the leg moving towards the hamstring muscles on the back of the leg. Your leg may quiver a little bit or a lot. Good. And then bend that leg in towards your chest. Bring your left leg, holding the right shin, bring your left leg in. Switch sides. Left leg stays in, right leg goes out. One hand, right hand to thigh, left hand. Start to make some circles. Other way. You may notice that one side, it's really smooth. The other side, it feels more rigid. And then leg up towards the sky. Relax the shoulders out of the ears. Flex both feet. And you're not trying to fix anything. You're not trying to do anything. You're just staying with it. The outer left hip very gently wraps away from your shoulder. The hands are firm against the hamstrings, kind of hugging the muscle, skin to muscle, muscle to bone. And the quad is matching, the four quadricep muscles are matching that by moving towards your hamstring. Good, bend that knee in towards the chest. Keep that leg bent in, set your right foot to the floor. Figure four. Flex your left ankle, left foot, and hook it right above your right knee and reach behind the back of the leg. And now if you like, add in that simple smoothing breath where you inhale for six, hold for three, and exhale for nine. If that feels like too much, you just take it out or you can go shorter, do inhale four, hold two, exhale six. The point is just creating a little bit longer exhale. Starts to activate more deeply the parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and restore. You're using your abdominals to breathe. You try to activate the belly breathing, not just your chest. Good. and then release that foot. Set the left foot down, right ankle up, right foot hooks above left knee, thread your hands. You may not have even missed a beat, you might still be on that. Inhale six, hold three, exhale nine.
So breathing is an excellent way to create a ripple effect in your body to slow things down, to become more present. And we're doing this breath, which is very calming. I also did the bee's breath, the humming. Can't really think when you're humming. So that's where that is incredibly helpful in reducing anxiety. And then release your clasp. Set your feet down to the floor, heels of your hands towards your hip creases, fingertips point up towards your knees. Push your hands into your legs, just to traction your low back here a little bit. Let your chest almost fill up. Exhale, letting the breath completely empty out. And we're gonna do a final squeeze and release. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Wrap your forearms around your shins. Curl your head up into a tiny little ball. Flex every muscle you possibly can in your entire body. Flex, flex, flex for three. Tighten, two, keep holding. And one, good. Let it all release down into Shavasana. Let your legs extend out. If you have a blanket, you want to cover up. Push into your elbows a little bit. Curl your upper arm bones in toward each other, elevating the upper part of the spine. And then relax your entire outer body as best you can. Relax your jaw. Relax the space between your eyebrows. And I will cue you when it's time to come out. So take a few moments here. Letting your body rest. Start to bring a little bit of movement into your fingers and your toes. Stretch your arms up and over your head. Bend your knees, place your feet to the floor. And let's roll onto your right side, bringing your body upright to an easy seat. Hold your hands in together at your heart space. And as you leave the mat today and we think about the idea of the ripple effect that we can have, not just on other people's lives, but on our own life and the blessings. Sometimes I use a word of the day and and that's the word I try to look for and find. And the word that I've been sitting on for several days is blessings. And I notice every little thing might be my son asking me for a hug or my husband just putting his hand on my shoulder or bigger things like notes coming in the mail. But every single one of us has blessings that enter our life. 
and we never know the ways in which our thoughts, words, and actions are having an effect on someone around us. So bringing thumbs up to third eye. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up today, being a part of this practice. We needed you. We're so grateful you were here. And it was my pleasure to be with you. Namaste. Thank you, yogis. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Maybe share it. Tag someone that you feel like would enjoy this practice. And if you have requests moving forward, I would love to hear those as well. And we will see you next time. So Saturday, Power Yoga, 9 a.m. is our next class. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day.